good. We're so glad to have you as a part of our congregation today. And uh, as we begin our worship, we're worshiping in the parking lot. We're in uh, lawn chairs. Um, for those of you who may be joining who are outside of the area, uh, we're in Lafayette, Louisiana. Of course, many of you heard about the storms that came through. Praise be to God that our congregation was mostly spared. There are a few trees down, some fences, things like that. But to my knowledge, uh, everybody's okay. We still have some power issues that we're struggling with. Um, some of the homes of our members still are without power. Um, and thanks be to God for those uh, people who are working 24-7 to get that. Uh, hopefully it won't take seven, but 24 hours a day to try to get uh, that power back on for us. So pray for them and their safety. Uh, we also uh, lift up concerns for those in Lake Charles uh, because we know that the, the hurricane took a very similar path. They were already pretty devastated from that storm. Fortunately, this storm wasn't as bad, but it, it uh, compounded the damage that had already been done for some. And so uh, we, we continue to ask for your prayers. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, recovery and resilience. Resilience is a word that, that you'll, you'll hear a bit more. Um, recovery is what we do in the immediate aftereffect of a, of a storm. Resilience is about uh, continuing and uh, snapping back as well as we can. Um, in that light, uh, we've been working with uh, Presbyterian Disaster Assistance. That's why I have the t-shirt on today, plus it's kind of hot in the parking lot. And uh, another group called Nahama, which is uh, a, a Jewish uh, recovery group who's been staying with us. And um, Nahama was working in Lake Charles, and they had to evacuate for the storm. And um, they will be coming back to stay with us later this afternoon while they figure out uh, what, what they're going to do next, where the greatest needs are, and how they can help. So uh, that's that, those are some of the ways that, that this congregation are helping with immediate recovery. Um, and, uh, and wanted you to know about it. <clears throat> so as you contribute to the ministry of the church, that's one of the things you're helping us with, is to be good hosts. Um, hospitality is a, is a key factor to who we are in this uh, place and in this region. Um, also, next Sunday is Laity Sunday. Our tradition is that we have church members who will uh, lead worship together and uh, offer stories of faith. You'll see some of that next Sunday. And then um, following worship, there will be a barbecue. We always have a barbecue, and we're not stopping. This time, it's going to be takeout, though. So uh, you'll see there's information that will be posted on our Facebook page and website later today. Already, It's already gone out to the congregation by email uh, so that you can pre-order. Um, you can also call the church office to what's been ordered. Um, Mo, the cost for... Adults age 12 and up is $8, and then uh, children 5 to 11 is $4, and under 5 is free. Um, so we, we just need to know how many meals to prepare and uh, let us know. So next Sunday, uh, you'll hear some great testimonies of faith from members our, of our congregation, and, uh, and we'll have a, a drive through where you can come through the parking lot and pick up your, your barbecue. Um, are there any other immediate announcements from the community that we need to make? We're kind of scattered and smattered and covered, so, you know, we don't have as many as normal. Uh, but it feels good to be able to ask that question. I've been leading worship online with recorded services for so long now, so it's just nice to ask some of those questions with, with some people here, who even whether they have something or not. Well, um, let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God together. Uh, I do want to encourage you, if you want to support the ministry of the church, uh, those who are here, there is an offering plate on your way out, um, as well as a basket for those who want to um, pay for their lunch for next Sunday. Just keep those separated. Um, and, uh, and you can also go online through our website. Just click the Give Online button. You can pay th give, give through PayPal. So um, now let us uh, prepare our hearts and minds to worship God together. Let us experience that resilience of faith. Uh, let us know of the Lord's presence and be glad.
people of God, let us pray using select verses of Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me. For you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye wastes away from grief, my soul and body also. For my life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my misery, and my bones waste away. I have passed out of mind like one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel, for I hear the whispering of many, terror all around me, as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hands. Fast love. Encouragement from the psalmist as well. Love the Lord, all you his saints. The Lord preserves the faithful, but abundantly repays the one who acts. For all you who wait for the Lord. So I want you to imagine the sound of that water. God's love has been poured out. Know of God's love. Redeemed for God's presence, for God's word.
Today's reading. And it comes from a section on Christian living. Nine through thirteen. Let love be genuine. What is good? Love one another with mutual affection. Out. Spirit, serve the Lord. Contribute to the needs of the saints. really heard the word resilience in connection with faith was at a presentation. Um, and this committee was the disaster. And uh, after a while, it ended up. like the Lorax for the tree in that famous story. Now, and Dick didn't cry out for the wetlands because he didn't know. That mattered in the in-between times. being prepared for the next thing. You are more resilient. Recover or adjust. Uh, I put a couple of little graphics in there about some other ways to look at the idea of resilience. Uh, advancing despite adversity. Changes and challenges are going to come, right? Your sense of vision and purpose move you through them. If we don't even try. why Paul wrote that and this one certainly was like That's kind of where we are right now. Embrace the challenges and the changes, and even death itself. Pass to what is good. Not 
dragon zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Sounds like. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. And Paul even includes strangers in this. Because the point of the gospel is to remember that nobody needs to be estranged from one another. In fact, the and from all of creation has come to an end. Divide us economically. Everything that divides us from North Lafayette to South Side to from Freetown to River Ranch, those are all tied up in that same reality. And here we are, literally, physically, in the middle of all of that. Here we, uh, here we are feeling kind of punch drunk from storms and politics and very real loss. Here we are looking for hope. And we're outside the building in which we're accustomed to worshiping inside. And yet hope is staring us right in the eyes. All you have to do is look around. All you have to do is look around and see one another. Maybe if you're online, just look and see who else is watching right now. Think about those who are in your life who've come into your life recently. All you have to do is look around and you'll see the most resilient thing there is. And it can't be contained in a building. It can't be hidden by a mask, although it can compel you to wear a mask, like all of y'all are doing right now. It's the love of God in Christ Jesus that we're talking about. And it pulls us from our places of dread, and it shoves us into the light of the opportunity to be more loving together. And that's what resilience looks like in the light of our faith. Resilience comes from the opportunity to be more loving together. Now, psychologists and educators talk about resilience in terms of systems of care and learning, and, and I think that can help us understand a little bit more of the how-to of resilience. As long as we understand love as the why of resilience, we have to know our why. There's an article in Psychology Today, Catherine King wrote this article about seven different practical skills for being resilient, and as I read the scripture, I felt like these just overlaid right on top of the scriptures. So I'm going to read them together. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. We've heard that a couple of times. Principle one, cultivate your, your belief in the ability to cope. Know that you're going to get through this. Principle two, stay connected with sources of support. Let love be genuine. Hold fast to hate what is evil. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Principle three, talk about what you're going through. Connect with those people who love you and whom you love. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Principle five. Activate. And all those things, be positive about it. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Principle six. Cultivate an attitude of survivorship. Your identity is wrapped up in that sense of knowing that you have survived. You will survive. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. The last one is seek meaning. And I think those connect particularly in the way that we find meaning when we look outside of ourselves. We certainly have to understand ourselves, know ourselves, but we, we find greater meaning when we look outside of ourselves. Now, so far, we've been talking about resilience as a, a goal, an ideal, maybe even a way of life. I've tried to give you some biblically grounded principles and some tools, but I'm going to drill down a minute into that last verse, that last verse about saints and strangers, because we are the saints in question, God's people who are proclaiming God's grace and God's goodness. We are those saints, and at the same time, we are the strangers, sometimes to one another, sometimes to those that we keep at guard. So we're all wrapped up in that together. And it becomes this kind of dynamically organic system, like the wetlands, like our congregation, like people and families who connect and love one another. 
And that's the reason why I added that, uh, that other quote that's in your bulletin there. Ann Masson talks about resilience being part of a dynamic system. Resilience is the capacity of a dynamic system to adapt successfully to challenges that threaten the function, survival, or future development of the system. That's a lot of words, it's kind of thick, but the thing that, that struck me about that is that idea of, of threat and future survival. And sometimes, sometimes multiple storms per season, sometimes we feel a little threatened and it's our connection with others, our ability to be part of that system that, that helps us to get through. We, we can talk about that threat. But we do have to talk about money or else we'll end up like Sisyphus. That's the last drawing in the bulletin there. It's a character pushing a rock up a hill. That's that Greek myth of that guy who's sentenced to push the rock up the hill for eternity and it just drops back down. And I have to admit, there are times when I've felt like small church ministry is kind of like that. But yet you've taught me something different over the last 10 years with all the things that we've accomplished together. You've taught me that we're a part of something greater and that we aren't just pushing a rock up a hill. We're connected with one another through our, our generosity, our resources, our sharing of our time and our relationships. Right now, as a congregation, we are financially sound, and that's a good thing. But we've also had some significant losses recently uh, due to people who have moved or who have joined the church triumphant, and we all know that. If we don't, then there's going to be a letter coming out soon to make sure that you know about it. Not as a threat, but as a challenge, as an opportunity, as an invitation to be part of a plan for resilience, that we might together move forward, that we might again do wonderful things, that we might proclaim God's grace again and again as we have before from this little corner. I wonder if you believe that's true. If you believe it, that we can get from there, if from here, from here to there, if you believe that we can get that rock over the hill. I want to tell you that I believe it. In fact, I know it because I've seen it. This little congregation that could, in the last 10 years, we've been part of regional recovery from devastating storms. We've built a clean water filtration system with international partners in Cuba. We've hosted presbytery meetings, sent commissioners to regional and national councils. We've left indelible marks on the church, the body of Christ. And throughout the world, we've inspired hope in people who have come to us broken and have left with the hope of wholeness. And sometimes that's even me. And sometimes that's even you. There's so much more that we have done and will do together, and we know that because of what God has done through us in the past. So over the next few weeks, we're asking you to consider accepting the invitation to uh, make a commitment to give to the ministry of First Presbyterian Church, as we do every year. But please don't think of it as a bill or a payment for services or a membership or anything gross like that. Hopefully you don't think of it that way anyway. Think of it as nothing less than a response to God's grace and a statement to the world, to the world, that your faith, our faith, is the source of resilience and hope and dynamic transformation that this world needs right here, right now. Believe you will make it. Stay connected to those who will support you. Talk about it with those you trust. Help others. Stay positive. Think of yourself as a survivor and seek the meaning and love that God offers, that God transforms and redeems and sustains all things, and give glory to God always, now and forever. Amen.
those notes wafted by, I could, uh, was thinking about that idea of wanting to be more loving. And so I put my mask on because sometimes it's a practical thing. Sometimes it's just a statement of love. At least it is for me. And I pray that it might be for you. Um, we have a lot to pray about. Are there uh, particular things that y'all can lift up? It's kind of difficult being spread out like we are and all in the parking lot. I can tell you, you can raise your hand if you have something particular you want to, to share. Um, but I can tell you we've had, in terms of members uh, with trees down, um, uh, heard from a few. Ann Rochelle has a fence down, and um, Chuck, the neighborhood's kind of tore up, but y'all are, are doing okay. <coughs> no power. So as I said earlier, we're definitely praying for those who, um, for those who are working on those lines for safety for them. Um, yes, sir. We'll work on the volume for next time. <laughs> yep. Okay. We'll, we'll work on that. That's something else to ask everybody to be praying for is our, our technical ability on these things. <laughs> All right. It wouldn't be First Presbyterian if we didn't get at least a little bit of heckling, you know. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's turn to the Lord in prayer. And I'll try to talk louder. <laughs> he says after the sermon's over, conveniently. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love you, Stephen. <laughs> All right. Gracious God, we give thanks that you've called us to be a loving community, that you've given us one another to laugh with, to hurt with, to love with. And we pray, oh God, for those who are working for this community right now, uh, we can hear the sounds of work in the background. We know neighbors are helping neighbors. We know line, lines people are working on those power lines. Uh, we know that our friends from Nahama are on their way back from Texas so that they can see where they can be the most helpful. We have members who are still making masks and distributing them to people who are vulnerable, the children and, and others. Uh, so we just ask for a continued awareness of your presence. As I feel the breeze, I'm reminded of your Holy Spirit. Life that is with us even now, so that you are as close to us as our breath and holding us throughout. So God, we continue to lift up this congregation as we seek to do your will. And we continue to lift up this nation as we struggle with this pandemic and this world as we Consider how we might uh, be more faithful in all that we do. Oh God, we pray for your uh, blessing on those who lead, for courage on those who stand for justice, for uh, understanding and wisdom for us as we seek to be your people together. We pray all of these things with the hope of a resilient faith as we join our voices praying as we've been taught to pray by your Son, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I want to share a couple of you for our charge and benediction. Uh, hear these words. They come from 1 Corinthians and also the book of Jude. My beloved, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, because you know that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Now to God who is able to keep you from falling and to make you stand without blemish in the presence of God with rejoicing. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time, now, and forever. Go in peace, live and love, this, love and serve the Lord. Amen. Thank you.
out to not forget uh, offering plates as well as uh, those who are online.